What you're about to view is an example of an individualized family service plan or IFSP meeting. The purpose of this meeting is to develop a plan of supports that will address the family's priorities and areas of concern. Okay, so we'll just move on to the cognitive development. You all mm -hmm. didn't say that you had any concerns about that. Area. One, she one thing I wanted to, to kind of touch on a little bit, I know, Dad, you talked about um, one of the other concerns you had, and it, if it was the reason she wasn't talking about her sensory processing. Mm -hmm. And I really don't feel um, that her sensory processing is impacting her, her language skills at this time. Yeah, could you explain a little more as to what that actually is and how <laughs> that relates? It is, it is one of the words that we say a lot these days. And, it, it, and really, sensory processing is how we take in information and what we do with that information. Everything is sensory, from what we see, to what we hear, to what we feel. And you know, the example I give, um, if, you know, the TV in the other room, I hear it, but it's not distracting to me. I, I know it, I'm regulating to it. Um, now, if an alarm went off, we'd all respond in a different way. So for some children, as they take in information, it may be like an alarm. Though to us, it's just the TV going. So it is, really can be impacting. Everything we do is sensory, so you can't take away from it. But I really don't think that's what's impacting Bree's communication skills. Well, that helps. I saw it in a few of the reports, and I was just like, OK, I think right. I know what that means, but I wasn't quite sure. Right, and it's been on TV. And if you go right. on the internet, it can be very overwhelming. Which we did. <laughs> Which we did, yeah. I found her attention span to be wonderful when we were interacting. Um, and if you remember, the phone rang several times while I was here. I think there was a delivery package or something that happened, and she just really stayed right with me. Um, so I would yeah, she's really motivated to learn. Mm -hmm. She was able to understand and follow simple commands or requests that I had made. Um, she's able to identify body parts. She actually was able to sort red and yellow been teddy bears. On that. <laughs> yes, and I can tell that you've been working on that. She very much enjoyed pointing out objects in a book when I asked her to identify them. Um, I have no concerns about her cognitive abilities or her ability to use what she's learning through play at this point. And one of the things about cognitive skills is that, and similar to what John said, all areas of development are really linked. So what's happening in one area of development can really impact another area. And her cognitive skills really are strong. And I saw that when I was engaging with her and really watching her communication skills. She is, um, like Jennifer said, a really motivated little girl. And she just enjoys playing and learning and exploring toys. And that's a really good thing for communication because she's interested in a variety of toys. She was willing to do puzzles, and she was willing to do books. She was willing to do a little bit of pretend play. Um, and all of those are really good opportunities for learning speech and learning new words. And well, I think she takes after her dad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. and you can really like see <laughs> that you're spending time in playing with her. When I pulled out the play dishes and the play food, you knew that she had been spending time with you in the kitchen on the floor playing as you're cooking dinner. Levels of development should not be all about the deficits. Providers should highlight the positives and can take this opportunity to provide feedback on the strengths they have identified. Providers may also encourage families to continue doing what they have found successful for their child and their family. All the areas of development overlap and can impact one another. This is one of the many reasons it is important to look at the whole child. Okay, so why don't we talk about her self-help and adaptive skills at this time? I know, Maria, when we talked about self-help um, and adaptive skills, you, weren't, you didn't have any concerns. Do you have new concerns about that area? I don't. I mean, I pretty much can tell what she wants, and she's pretty good about taking care of herself. I mean, right. you know, as far as you know, um, she, she's already picking out certain clothes that she likes <laughs> and she's got definite opinions about things and I didn't think that would start that early but you know so I don't have any concerns. I don't know I think she's real independent. I mean almost too. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean she takes after her dad like that too. <laughs> she's doing great with a cup. She's doing great with her spoon and her fork. I know I we talked a little bit about how much opportunity she should have. I know with the new baby 
mm -hmm. you know, balancing that can be difficult, but really this is, we want her to be as independent as possible and giving her those opportunities, not to, to frustration, but I was really surprised that she didn't get frustrated, even when the task was a little, was new to her. Yeah. She took a little time and, and that's where her attention and her interest really can help us in the long run. But she loved pu playing with the puzzles, mm -hmm. um, so which is great for building some of the language um, skills that she, yeah. she needs in communication. She was really motivated by pu small puzzles and, and in fact I couldn't take things out fast enough and, <laughs> and that probably was the only time I saw her frustrated is if I um, was not moving fast enough for her. Yeah, yeah, she gets that way sometimes and I've caught her actually trying to help you know with the baby, pretending to feed the baby and um, you know so I, it, it's kind of cute but you know she's, I, I, she's great, I don't have any issues there. And I really didn't have any concerns either. She was helping to take her coat on and off and mm -hmm. uh, helping with the zipper. Um, she also, I know, was helping to start washing and drying her own hands. And mm -hmm. you indicated that you've started letting her really help with putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those are wonderful skills to help increase her independence. The fact that she allows you to brush her teeth and actually wants to brush her teeth, mm -hmm. kind of again that 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 sensory piece that would be might be a flag if she didn't like to have that done. Sometimes children, you know, especially at her age, independence becomes the not I don't like um, mommy mm -hmm. and daddy to do it for me. I want to do it, and that's what really she showed us a lot of. They got great flavors of toothpaste. <laughs> so, you know, it makes a lot easier than when we were little. Exactly. Yeah. Notice how this family is very engaged and involved during the discussions around levels of development. Providers can use strategies to engage families such as ask the family for updates and clarifications, ask open-ended questions, relate back to things they talked about and shared during the evaluation assessment, highlight activities the family already engages in that support their child's development. 